news and welcome to ANM Air Adda, a signature program interviews with celebrities and people who are a formidable force in their field. Today I have a surprise for you. 12 points for guessing who our guest is. I'll give you the name. Miranda Liu. Rings any bell? Well, for anybody in Kolkata, she is an entrepreneur, a socialite, all molded into one, a lady who is seen everywhere, every time. Oh yeah, she's here with us. Welcome to ANM News, Miranda. How Thank are you doing? Thank you, Vijay, for inviting me. Everything fine? All okay? okay? Yeah, yeah. Good to Why see not? you. Why not? Good to see you smiling. Every time I see you, I see you smiling. You're, you're always very positive. You have a very positive I think it's the environment. Vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Our Kolkata vibes. <laughs> Absolutely, Miranda. Now, uh, let me start by asking you one very basic question. Uh, how do you define yourself? Are you a social worker? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you an activist? You're what? As a woman, I think I'm uh, all packaged in one. Uh, but uh, your question about entrepreneur, I think entrepreneur, you know, and a social worker. Because if you're an entrepreneur, you must have a vision. Vision of not only like uh, what you can do for society. So humans are social beings. And as an entrepreneur, eventually you, yes, along the way, you also, with business, it means uh, what you can do for society and what can, what you're making, what, how much you can return back. So you can say entrepreneur and social worker. It's all Goes always in hand in hand. Always mixed together. Yes, in yeah. Great. So the, can you I cannot be you? an entrepreneur and say, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, as, a, as a social being, you don't want to give back to society. True. Very yeah. correct. Very correct. So as we get along, I'll offer you uh, coffee. Uh, yeah, which is yeah. because we have yeah. uh, the Astor, Astor coffee is... Uh, well, the I mean, speciality, uh, uh, yeah, speciality. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I'm ready this thing with Astor coffee. So uh, I don't know whether you like it or not, but yeah. definitely it's uh, some a different uh, coffee brewed in a different way. Yeah. That's okay, all, okay. All yeah. what they mentioned. Thank and of you. course, uh, this is in our A&M News special cup. Thank you. We'll see that. So, Miranda, I want you to go back on your mm -hmm. younger days. Yeah, when yeah. you're young, your mom started this Beijing, very famous, authentic Chinese food restaurant. Now I'll come to the Chinese food because we get Chinese food in every doorstep of Kolkata but that's not the Chinese food as we all know but I'll come to that later. But then how did you spend your younger days? How do you see your mom building up this uh, Beijing and the business brick by brick? You know we were not uh, like uh, born with golden spoons so we did have a, we've seen like uh, through thick and thin we've been together as you say, water and fire through uh, blood and sweat. We have worked, we worked for this uh, business, especially in this food business. How my mom started was that, you know, one day she went to uh, my brother's school and all the hawkers were evicted. You know, the Puchkawala, the Muriwala, they were all evicted in one go outside the school. And my mom said like, you know, why, why, where, where, are, where are your stalls? You know, they're saying, oh, we've been evicted, you know, by the local Thana. And she's saying, and as, you, as usual, like an activist with a lot of guts, she went to the Thana and she went, uh, she went to the OC and she said, why aren't you allowing them to sell if they're making their uh, living? You know, that's a basic living, which they have a right to. And then uh, that's how she went and fought with the, with the officer over there and got them reinstated to sell. Uh, their puchkas and all that. And eventually, she made friends with uh, with Mr. Day, and from there onward, we invited him for so you saw lunch. The yes, we know. No, we, we invited him for lunch, and we made she made her special uh, chili chicken. 
So you saw that activism in yes. your mom right from your younger days. But then yeah. how did she build the restaurant? She built it up and then because of his, he kept on instigating her that your food is so good, you should open your own restaurant. And uh, so that time she was running a beauty parlor and my dad was into leather business, but uh, not doing that great. And, uh, and when we got a chance to open, uh, we got a space to open a small restaurant called Kimling Restaurant. And that was the first AC restaurant. That idea was, you know, basically it was a Bengali friend now that who really pushed her that, you know, you have the talent, you can, you can make good food and uh, people would love it. That's how we started that small restaurant, Kimling. And Kimling also, you know, uh, we had like fans, you know, you can say her fans, you know, who come even at night, 10 o'clock we close, 11 o'clock they come, she'll still cook for them. Great. So yeah. when you were growing up oh. in that in the neighborhood, you grew up in Tangra. Yeah, in so, Tangra. So at that point of time, how big was your community? Our community, we had around maybe when we started, maybe there were around uh, 20,000 20, people and plus. That is only in Tangra itself, you know. And uh, in Kolkata? All over Kolkata, maybe at that time, maybe it was maybe 30. 30,000. Yeah, 30. So you have seen now uh, our community dwindling. <laughs> you have seen your community dwindling. You have seen people going out. Uh, do you, have you seen people coming in and going out? So if you can just throw some light on that. How uh, people going out because the youngsters, uh, the those who are educated, are going out uh, because after the 1962 uh, Indochina War, right? Um, people were put in the refugee camp, and thereafter. The choice, uh, the Chinese government did send some ships to uh, repatriate them back, but they did not. They were given choices, you know. And so a lot of them started going abroad, like Canada or Sweden, Austria. But my grandfather stayed back. For them, they have come all the way from China to India, thinking, that, you know, like for Chinese to come in India, they were given a choice. When they landed up in Hong Kong, do you want to go to India, you want to go to Bangkok, or you want to go to Malaysia and all that? But no, he's, they all decided that they want to move to India, especially Calcutta. Like they have, uh, they had the idea, you know, after the Indian independence, that it's a country of democracy, country where people welcome them with good opportunities, and uh, they were at home. They felt at home. That's why a lot of Chinese from the 40s, 50s, they all started moving to India, and that's how our population grew quite a lot. But after 1962, yes, the youngsters started moving out. And eventually, uh, yes, there are opportunities, better opportunities maybe out there. But me and my family, we have stayed back. So we you, found, you stayed we, back? Yeah, we, we felt Calcutta was always home. We so always had good friends. The restaurants, yeah. Kimling yeah. and Beijing, Beijing did they yeah. start post-1962 or before that? No, 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 much around uh, 1990s. We started in, in, in the 1990s. Onwards, we've been moving, you know. Moving along. So, yeah, you have, uh, so people move migrating to Canada, migrating to other places, dwindling Chinese community. Yet you stuck on, and you. What is the difference between but the Chinese? But you know, food? those Chinese who have gone abroad, even when they uh, they do have some relatives here. But when they, when it's New Year time, they do come back. They come. Like this is still home. Great. This so, is where they've grown up. Now tell me the difference between the Chinese food that we get on the streets of Kolkata <laughs> and the Chinese food that people long for in Tangra or in Tariti Bazaar. I mean those small the, Chinese The Chinese restaurant. food, uh, see when you say Chinese food, is like synonymous with you know the Hakka Chow Mein. You go abroad, it's everyone knows, even if they open a restaurant, it is called the Hakka Chinese food. So what do you get from Tangra is more or less like the Hakka style. And what you get in Tarati Bazaar is maybe a bit more of the Cantonese because there are a bit more Cantonese concentrated over there. So we had a Hakka version which is in Tangra. That's a difference, but not much of a difference. But maybe we have uh, tweaked our, you know, our like uh, spices, you know, to Your spices suit, are yeah, to suit more like for uh, Bengali, you know, our Indian. Uh, but your spices Indian that customers, you get, do you yeah. get those spices from China, those special spices that you use in... Yeah, we do get a few items, for instance, uh, mushroom. We do get the shiitake mushroom we have to get from abroad, the black fungi. A lot of, uh, maybe, uh, if we do add some goji berries or ginseng, anything, we do get from abroad. Uh, and we try to use mostly uh, the local, 
whatever is uh, the seasonal vegetables, is, everything is from here. We always try to incorporate. Are you a good cook? Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm in restaurant business, so <laughs> I've been brought up in that environment. Yeah. My grandmother was uh, into restaurant also. That's how my mom has, you know, that was a passion. So that's how she started. And that's how it this. Yeah, and that's how uh, now our family, like our generation is like into, into food. Yeah. Great. So in New York, when you, behind every successful woman, they say behind every successful man, there's a woman. There's a every, woman. <laughs> <laughs> the, the role is also reversed. Behind yeah, every yeah. successful woman, there's also a man. Yes, because so, uh, what you're saying is my husband, right? Yes. Yeah, he's been very cooperative. He's but like. You, you fell in love? Uh, it was an arranged marriage. Oh. <laughs> Along the way. <laughs> Along the way. But Along the way, then you fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you're a beautiful lady. I mean, of course, during yours. Uh, school and college days, you must have had a lot of classes. Yeah. So you, yeah, I've, I've, I'm uh, actually a Loretto student all the way, from <laughs> Shillong to Intali to Loretto House to Loretto College, all the way. Absolutely. Had so when you were doing your this thing in uh, in, in your community, there's good uh, many schools there in yeah, Tangra, and uh, there. so does your community members go to those schools, or did you? Yes, uh, uh, our community, we have one small uh, school called the, called the Pemoy Chinese High School. But that time, the, for the, it was only taught in Chinese, you know, in Mandarin. And that was like till primary section. Primary means like KG till class 6. And there onwards, you have to get admitted to an English school. Okay. So, only till primary. Till date, uh, not now at the moment, because prefer, everyone prefers to study English. Oh. That is what is in demand. So, is there, uh, uh, does the community people want to learn uh, Mandarin at the moment? Or? Yes, it is. It has become now with China becoming uh, quite uh, strong and uh, people are doing a lot of business in China. Yes, it has become like, uh, it's not that you need to go to school now to learn Mandarin. Like, if, even if you need to do business, you need to know Mandarin. Absolutely. It's easier to communicate. So, in your uh, business, in, in, in the uh, restaurant business, in the food business, you have expanded a lot. Yeah, so can you just did. throw some light as to how uh, big this market is and how uh, welcome, how, how did you feel while, while you expanded? And, and, through, and, and le also let us know about the leather market. You know, when you, when you expand is because, you know, there is demand. It's Absolutely. because the people love you, the people love your food, that's why you expand. Uh, but ours has always been a family-owned business. So, as I said, we started with a small restaurant called Kimwe. And uh, then we moved on, uh, we, uh, we had an opportunity to acquire this Mandarin. And afterwards we did uh, Beijing, Tungfong, and another new Mandarin. And we did open in Durgapur, uh, but Durgapur was a bit of uh, too far. So we could not get like fresh material, you know, fresh food to be uh, delivered over there. So that was that we scrapped it but yes uh, I think the new generations you know my son is uh, one of my son is into food business so they are catching into yeah, this they're catching. and what about the leather business because we heard about Chinese uh, I mean uh, apart from the food yeah the uh, they leather own business. the best uh, shoes uh, in not only no, no not not what you can see is the leather the leather, leather tannery okay. yeah Chinese uh, you know with Terra with Bobazar and all that they were always making shoes right but in times, times have changed and uh, that time, at that time when there was a demand then the Chinese moved into Tangra and opened the fa uh, leather factories. But uh, with people going abroad, the next generation they never wanted to do. Like now I'm, I am the third generation, my son is going to be fourth generation. Yes, one of my son is going to be involved in the leather business, leather and leather goods. So do so you think the leather business, uh, that has a uh, lost interest down the line to a certain extent it's you know leather business is those who are making leather is always a passion okay. it's not that you know they've lost interest it's just that they have aged and uh, the next generation doesn't want to do this business it's so it's not that they have lost passion so people who are still doing are still doing and uh, though it has uh, reduced down the factories have they have reduced down but it's not that uh, there's no there's no passion. It's just that they have the passion, but they don't have the people to carry forward the business. 
Absolutely. So that's why they wind up. That's a, that's yeah. getting smaller and smaller yes. by the day. So now you said that 30,000 Chinese, uh, Indian Has Chinese were there. Dwindled, dwindled down to maybe 6,000 now. S only? 6,000, yeah. Okay. So what was the, what primarily was the reason apart from 1962 war? If, are there any other primary reason was, as to why? Uh, mm, with education. With education, I think uh, the lifestyle were there maybe. And uh, here they never, uh, people, you know, the Chinese are always, uh, you know, like a peace loving kind of people. They don't want any trouble. They are, once they're educated, they never thought of like, let's do some, uh, you know, they can uh, look for jobs, like a government job or something like that, which can yeah, keep the them over here. <laughs> <laughs> this place is famous for its kebab. All the, all the all kebabs. Over the Thanks for inviting me to Astra. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't miss it also <laughs> for the food. <laughs> so uh, that is the reason why you feel that the community is the new generations, the new, new generations, gener the educated generations. Yeah, and uh, once they go abroad, you know, they they find their uh, partners, the partners from there. So if the partners they don't want to come back, then it's very it's very difficult for them to come back. But they have their parents over here, you know. They may have a few siblings over here and all that. But they always have someone over here. That's why every New Year, every Lunar New Year, they come back. They come back here yeah, for, they the, come back for the, here the to celebrate Chinese New Year. As I said, this time I think there were 150 people that have come back. Oh. So that's that's quite a lot here. Yeah. So you have Chinese associations here, which take care of your the especially the food business and for, for your uh, leather uh, food. I think we have always been independent. So. There is not, uh, you cannot say there's a community for the restaurant, but definitely there is a, for the Leather Tammy Association, it's there. We do have a Tammy Association over here. And for the community, there is an association? Yes, it's called uh, the Tango Chinese Welfare Association, in which my father is the president, <laughs> I'm the secretary. It's uh, to help out the Chinese, you know, any, uh, they do have any uh, issues uh, with the local to do with uh, among themselves if they have any issues that is being resolved by the, the association. Okay, and is, uh, and the, uh, the uh, Buddhism that uh, the Chinese uh, uh, often uh, speak about uh, the Chinese school of Buddhism. So how, uh, if, if you can throw some light on that? The Buddhism, uh, we have, uh, we had to have two groups, you know, one from China uh, which uh, looks after one of the temple in Chaubaga and one uh, which has come in from another branch which has come in from Taiwan. So they are there in Tangra. Uh, we do, it's not that you know it separates us that you follow this or follow that temple. Every, everywhere it's like it's the same. Religion has never uh, played a role, has never played a role in you know like in our community. It, in fact, it brings us together. Absolutely. That's like uh, any, any gathering or any function, any festivals, they are all there. Even I'm there. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm a Catholic, but my family is Buddhist. So it's like uh, you still follow the same culture, the traditions. We do, we do have uh, prayers and all that, you know. So pujas and all that is all there. It's the so same. We, we, we follow that irrespective of even if you're a Catholic. Uh, but we see this, and you know, Bruce Lee is a very famous uh -huh. uh, Chinese actor, yeah, and we follow the Shaolin Temple. So, what is that Shaolin Temple? It's, a, it's for martial art. It's only for. I think uh, Shaolin Temple is like it is. Uh, it is a part of a uh, sect of Buddhism, but uh, they do. Uh, they did. They do teach them. You know, it's to discipline them. Actually, it's a it's a disciplinary uh, disciplinary kind of uh, thing. You know, to teach them uh, kung fu. It's like you know. The Shaolin Kung Fu is just like uh, how we have like the yoga. So the temple also have uh, like a Kung Fu for more or less like a kind of an exercise to keep them fit. You know? So do you have it in Kolkata? Uh, at the moment, no. We did have one uh, master, you know, at one time teaching Kung Fu, but he died long time back. And with that, I think he was, he had Indi Indian students also, a lot of Indian students. But uh, with him passing away, there was no one to pass down the mantle to. So you've been to China several times to yeah, your yeah. Uh, for business purpose and whatever. Yeah. So how do you feel the people-to-people -people relationship between the two countries? Uh, they are in fact surprised that we have some uh, a small Chinese community in India, especially in Kolkata. They've never heard of. So now the consulate is trying to bridge, 
the gap you know between you know like uh, we do know about uh, we do know about where we come from where uh, like our ancestors ancestors are from like from which uh, province uh, but they do not know about us so now he's trying to try to build a bridge between the community from china and uh, the community in in mayshen Okay. So now we we've uh, last time we went in a small group. So like we've come to know. Okay, like you know, this is where our ancestors are from. Something new for us, but Absolutely. it's something very enlightening. You know, like enlightening. You know, like you come to know. Otherwise, new generations they don't know. They are always uh, clueless because they think that this is home. Calcutta is home. <laughs> <laughs> Calcutta is always home. <laughs> very correct and yeah, then yeah. Uh, you you've been an activist all through whenever i've seen you uh, you have always championed the causes of people be it your community member be somebody outside so how my father was a champion that's why i was like yes according to me is my father is such a gentleman you know if he thinks even if my enemy is right he'll say he'll take his side not my side <laughs> So you'll take his side, you know. I understand. So it's like uh, I think I've learned from him. Okay. Because he was a teacher. Okay. Yeah, okay. he was a teacher. So it's like, what is right is right. What is wrong is wrong, irrespective of the relations, you know. Because uh, as a community, as a figurehead, you know, people follow him and trust him for a reason, right? Absolutely. So um, he has been a champion, and because of that. and i think what he is doing is right so that is the reason that you know so what what exactly are you doing right now as 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 a social uh, 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 worker are you putting an impact on your community what exactly are your priorities at the moment priority at the moment is uh, for instance our chinese school we do have now the only chinese school in calcutta so the chinese school that it the what we are trying to, yeah no is called the pemoy chinese high school Now we're trying to set everything in order because uh, we may not be there one day, but we want the school to remain there and to preserve the uh, preserve the school because on top there is a temple over there also. So maybe a uh, few years down down the line, maybe we'll uh, reopen the school and try to bring in some Indian students or some overseas students. That I think will give back to the society, you know, and maybe the, and also of course the locals. the local the local students which is important for us so that's the top priority yeah, and what else are you priority. working on uh in in what way tough to believe that mirinda is only <laughs> working on one particular school here so active uh community see, wise it, maybe community wise is like uh, anyone who has has any issues any help they need they always i'm always there i think uh, maybe that's you know a dial one <laughs> miranda <laughs> <laughs> Dial one for Miranda. Any anything. It's like uh, anything to do with legal or anything to do with uh, local police or uh, the local goons. Yeah, my mom is my mom is one of the. I think the first person they'll go to. Yeah, and uh, legal wise, maybe they'll come to me. So over the years, I mean, uh, in, in the future, immediate future, do you plan to have more people from? uh china or uh, nearest place in china uh kungmin na maybe come over to kolkata to look at uh, the beauty of kolkata or maybe that's what that's what i was thinking that maybe we should promote calcutta you know we should promote india or calcutta that it is a uh, it's a friendly place you can uh, come and do business you can come and uh, settle down over here because i see uh, some korean families have settled down so why not why not the chinese so opportunities are there and i think uh, the government is opening up also there are a lot of chinese coming to india at the moment uh, yes but not to calcutta maybe in other states maybe in uh, bombay in bangalore where you know they are able to set up some kind of uh, i think to do with the phone factories or the car factories that is being coming up so i guess uh, lots of chinese will come down and i guess if they do settle down they do get married <laughs> then they definitely but it'll be more like uh, it'll be like it's everywhere it will not be clustered in like you know in in calcutta itself 
that yeah. so has the recent hostilities changed any mindset or may, made things difficult no i don't think so it's just uh, it's just like um, it's a psychological problem because uh, i think we indians we are carrying an indian passport we are born and brought up over here so i don't think uh, i don't think that people have done anything that they should be scared of it's uh, there's no hostility is between the two countries it doesn't have anything to do with the people yes do you carry on with your business and activism and social work in a, yeah. a, a, a without uh, thinking or even remotely no, it has uh, never come to our thought that you know that uh, because if you have not done anything bad or thought of something which is against i don't think so and how is the covid affected your business covid uh, covid did affect like you know in the sense um, it opened up your mind it changed your priority like yes you were like very uh, into your business and then uh, your priorities change you think now your family friends are important more important now <laughs> because we lost a lot of friends we lost a uh, few family members and then you decide that yes money is not important you know i think uh, health is important your people around you who is keeping you happy they are they are important and how you can help them you want to be with them yeah and uh, but business wise it did affect i think for one and one and a half years but uh, we did now it's everything is everything is back to normal people are not wearing mask people are like um, let's fight it out and your uh, business is also back yeah to, back. Uh, to uh, what it was before covid yeah so mirinda lastly what what's your immediate future plan just say maybe in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours in the next 48 to 72 hours uh, i am going to host some few friends <laughs> uh, uh no uh, i have got a new venture actually at the moment is uh, it has something to do with leather goods so maybe for the next um, another 6 months i'm going to keep myself occupied with that and uh, later on maybe i have some more uh, business ventures so for that uh, maybe another one year will keep me occupied but yes for my community for my people i'm always there you know and not only for my community and my people for my friends oh that's that's yeah. that's damn good for news my friends means uh, you know it doesn't have to be uh, chinese for it's friends. everyone yeah, yeah for for everyone. friends means us all yes <laughs> <laughs> so it's all inclusive oh. <laughs> all inclusive <laughs> it is lovely chatting with you Miranda excellent you know born and brought up in uh, calcutta you do have the bengali wife you know our <laughs> adagri and all that this is what you have offered me this is called adagri <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot thank you so much it was a lovely session that i had with you uh, in the name of radha and uh, uh, to be with friends to work not only for the community but uh, have a long business venture ahead so she's one th- side going to be a, a community leader and the other side mm-hmm. she's going to be a business leader that's yes. mirinda lu for you so thanks a lot mirinda thanks a lot for watching anm news keep watching anm radha and we will come back to you with more such interesting interviews in future thank you thank you there thank you और खबरों के लिए सब्सक्राइब कीजिए एन एम न्यूज बेल आइकन दबाकर रहिए सबसे आगे